see that yet. Hmm. Buff them? Yeah. Fish. That's what I want. Okay, I think we're live, you guys. OMG. <laughs> are you guys there? Let me look over here on the chat. Tammy, are you there? David's there. <laughs> Say, so send Tammy that link, if you know how to do that, please. And then she can send it to the other people. OMG, about to die. David is. <laughs> Not sure how to do it either now. Well, hello, you guys. I'm so glad to see you're getting here. Hi, Joanne and Blessed Mama. Oh my gosh, this was like my worst nightmare <laughs> trying to get this thing started especially because I'm like the one man band here and I got that stick out in the backyard so you can see how I um, um, paint the thing if anybody can let people know over the Facebook group the link to this or any of the other groups because whew, I've started and stopped this about five times hi Pat yay <laughs> I'm back too I think Oh my gosh, between this and trying to put my, um, one of my, my phone out in the backyard so you can see me paint the wine bottle. I mean, I'm sure you could figure out how to paint the wine bottle. Hi, P Parks. <laughs> Hello. <sighs> All right, we're going to wait for a few minutes since I gave everybody the wild goose chase for about five different live streams. The thing is, I use this program called Switcher Studio. That allows me to switch you'll see from this screen my backyard to this screen to me and I can do that all from one of my iPads but sometimes it just doesn't want to play nicely with YouTube it seems or maybe I don't know how to play nicely with YouTube yet <laughs> anyway I'm excited that some of you are here now so if you could let other people know yay Stephanie I'm so sorry it's not you guys it's me I hope Tammy can find it. If y'all can let people know in the Facebook group where this link is, since I've been sending you all on a wild goose chase. <sighs> I tell you what, you guys, this calls for a lot more tea. <laughs> Maybe I need the wine that was in those wine bottles. <laughs> mm. Anyway, so we'll wait just a few more minutes and I'm so sorry I'm late. But like I said, I'm a one lady show and um, it's difficult sometimes. So, anyway. Yay! Yeah, hey, hey, Tammy! <laughs> Yippee! All right, so we'll just be ready to get started pretty quick here. I'm so sorry that I, I know, I know, I know. I sent y'all on so many wild goose chases to get here. It's just that this one program I use, Switcher Studio, wouldn't seem like it would play nice with YouTube. It kept disconnecting me for some reason, and I wasn't sure why. And then I'd see you guys say, well, we're here, we're here, and, and I couldn't hit any of the buttons. None of them would work on my iPad, so I was going crazy. Anyway, yay, child, woohoo, everybody's coming, yay. <laughs> Okay, so you see I have that stick set out in the backyard, right? And that's just so I can show you how I'm going to paint the darn bottle. It's not that exciting. I'm sure y'all can figure out how to uh, paint bottles. All right. So I guess that's one of the first things that I'll show you. Let's see, I do have some notes here. And so I was going to show you the bottle first, but I think I'll just go ahead and take that in the backyard right now and show you how I spray paint it. Uh, the kind of paint that I'm going to use 
it's just some stuff that I found over in my husband or my son's stuff. It's Ace Premium Enamel. <clears throat> it's just something that I have. It just says it's very fast drying and I just use it because I have it. I'm sure there's tons of different kind of paints you can use, but this one worked out perfectly. And as I said, um, you'll notice that you are going to get the three SVG files later on in the website to use on any bottles that you might have in case you want to play around with this. And by the way, as I said, in case some of you may not drink, be drinkers, wine drinkers especially, um, the place that you can get wine bottles, and I think I may have even talked about this in one of the news, the newsletter I sent out, but if you go to a restaurant where they sell wine for drinks, um, usually they have a big bin in there for recycling and they throw all their liquor bottles and wine bottles in there. And you can just um, go ahead and ask them for one of those, especially if you're a regular, you know, or ask them for a bunch of them. When I went to this restaurant, I always go to, geez, they were trying to give me like 10 or 15. I'm like, stop, I don't need that many wine bottles, you know. But anyway, that's just a free way to get wine bottles if you like them to make things with. So let's head outside now and I'll show you what I'm going to do out there. Uh oh, you probably won't be able to hear a word I'm saying, so then I'll come back in. But what I'm going to be using is this. See if I know how to turn it properly. There we go. Ace Premium Enamel. And like I said, this is just something I found in the basement down here. So, you know, use anything that you like. I'm just going to go out there and just going to lightly spray this. What I did was I got a dowel rod. And as you can see, I stuck the dowel rod in the ground so I don't have to touch it with my fingers. And I'm just going to go out there, put this bottle on there and spray it. And then I'll be right back in. So hang on just a sec. Okay, I'm back, but I forgot to bring the camera back. So I'll be right back again. Chat amongst yourselves, I'll be right back. <laughs> Okay, I have no idea if you just saw that because by the time I got out there, it said that my camera was too hot and it was not performing. <laughs> so you may not have seen that anyway. Oh, well. So I'm going to put my camera up in this holder and I'll be ready to start. Really. Okay, <laughs> so here we are. Let me move my laptop out of the way. And you can see here. So here's the bottle I did just go out and spray and I have no idea, like I said, if you saw any of that. Yeah, I thought you would see me do it too. But you know what happened? 
As I said, it got too hot, I guess, and my iPhone automatically turned off. Huh, that's what makes it hard when you're by yourself. Somebody else would have read that out there, I bet. Anyway, here's the bottle. And it doesn't matter if you get it sprayed really, really well, because we're going to distress it anyway. Hi, Deanna. Yeah, you found me again. <laughs> You didn't see me. Oh, darn it. And I had that all set up. That's half of my problem was setting up that camera outside in the yard because I wanted to see you to see me spray it. Oh, well. Okay, so here I have the bottle. And hopefully you're seeing this. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to measure it so I know how much space I have to work with. So that's the first thing that you have to do. And I know that roughly I have about when I measure this, about five and a half inches. And you will need to remember this in Cricut Design Space or measure your own bottle so that you can resize things as you need it by three and a half, like that. Okay, so I need to remember that five and a half by three and a half, roughly, because that's how big of a space I want to have my design in. All right, so I'm gonna set this aside and let it dry some more. And let's go up here to Silhouette Software. And you can see all three. Let me go back to Design. There we go. We can see all three of the bottles right here. And these will be the three SVGs that you'll get. And uh, the one that I'm going to work on today just to show you how to do it. And then you can go grab your own images anywhere. But I'm just going to do the Love Potion one. And I think that maybe y'all heard, maybe if you saw my newsletter, I talked about Love Potion Number 9, the song. I don't know how many of you remember that song from back in the day. And if you don't in the newsletter, there's a link to it because I think it's a funny song. But anyway, um, let's see. So what we're going to do is we're going to work on the Love Potion Number 9 one. And for those of you who are really, really young, it's not Love Potion Hashtag 9. It's Love Potion Number 9. All right, so first thing I need to do is I need to grab all these and just ungroup them. Because I'm just going to work on the one, and it looks like I can just move these things out of the way. And as far as this bottle right here, I just went online and found a wine bottle and then resized it about the size of my wine bottle. Because if I measure my wine bottle from top to bottom, it's about 13 inches. So I just made this wine bottle 13 inches just so I could get an idea of what it looked like. All right, so this is the one we're going to do, Love Potion number nine. And those of you in my classes, you may recognize what I've done to this text. Does anybody remember what I did to that text? Hey, Pat, you remember that song too? Yeah, me too. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to show you what I did to that text. So let's see. The first thing I had to do and I couldn't find the same little witch's cauldron that I got yesterday when I made this. So I just went on Google and found another one that was free to use. And I got this one right here. And I duplicated it in case I messed it up. So I have a second one. Here's my first one though. And obviously I just can't put this right on here. And those of you in Cricut Design Space, if you have the business edition of Silhouette Software, it's useful for Cricut Design Space. You can do all this stuff for your Cricut machine, and that's what I'm going to show, too, how to do this, use this in Cricut. Not to do this because it would be too hard, but how to use these things in Cricut. So the first thing that we need to do, for those of you who are familiar with this software, is we're going to come over here to the Trace tool. Yep, you're right, Tammy. <laughs> you got it. Ding, 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 you win. All right, select the Trace area. And there's the trace area right there. And that's not a very good trace because what I'm going to do is I'm going to trace and detach. So I'm going to move my threshold up. And for those of you who haven't taken any of these classes, it may seem like I'm going really fast for you. But we've been going over this for quite a while. And if you join us in the classes or the five free ones that I have over on my website, you'll get caught up pretty quickly. I'm just going to leave it, I guess, about like that. Now maybe all the way up until I get those jaggedy looking things. That's pretty good there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go trace and detach. So nice to see you guys all chatting there. 
Yay, Tina. <laughs> I'm glad you did too. All right, now it doesn't look like much happened here, but notice that box isn't behind this anymore. But it is over here. I can't really see it well, but it's here. So I'm gonna right click and delete it. Delete. So it should be all gone. So now what I'm going to do with this so that it's more useful on my bottle, so I'm going to change it so that it's just all totally black like a silhouette. And to do that, I'm just going to come up here to, to the color area and change it to black. And there it is, exactly what we want, a black witch's cauldron. And of course, I want to resize it so it fits on here nicely. And that's a little bit different than the one, like I said, I had yesterday. Here's what we're trying to replicate a little bit. So there's the witch's cauldron. And then the next thing that I did was I just uh, came over. Let me get rid of this trace panel. I came way over here to the left-hand side and got the letter, the um, fonts, the lettering. Aw, oh, thanks. Tina, I appreciate that. All right, so I'm going to type in the number not the number symbol and then the number 9 because this is love potion number 9. So, let's see. What I did on this one then was I went ahead and highlighted the number or the pound symbol or the hashtag and I came way over here to the right to the textile panel. And I changed that so it would be Arial font because I'm going to use scary Halloween font for the number nine, but that font, excuse me, doesn't have a pound symbol or a number sign or a hashtag. So I'm just going to use Arial and I'm going to make it bold so it's thicker. There we go. So that's all I want to do with that. But the number nine now, I'm going to change that. So I'm going to highlight that. And I love this font for Halloween stuff. It's called Scary Halloween Font. And it's really good for print and cut. Uh, I think I got it from defont.com. I'm going to click on that and it turned number nine into the, like this bleeding number nine. And I can make it larger if I like to. Okay, so the other thing I'm going to do then is I'm going to move this bottle out of the way. And I'm going to grab both of these and I want to get those cut out. Who remembers what tool I used to cut them out? I'm gonna highlight both of these things. I'm gonna come over here to the modify panel and and I'm going to subtract. So you the timing on this is off, so by the time I finish this, you guys will probably say. So there it is, number nine and love potion number nine. Now I am going to group these together, and if I take it over here and put it off top of the green bottle, you can see what's going to happen. We'll see the green through the pound sign or the number symbol and the number nine. So that's perfect. All right, the next thing that we got to do, so we have this and we have this. The heart was easy and I just did that because it's love potion. So of course with the heart you can do that here or in Cricut Design Space. Just come to your uh, shapes area and get the heart. And here for our heart it draws upside down to me. So I would just draw it here and then bring it over and resize it to whatever size I like. And once again I'm going to want that to be cut out. But wait a minute. No, I don't want that cut out. What am I saying? I just want that to be black. It's going to be a silhouette. So I just come up here to the uh, color swatch area up in the upper left. And I'm going to change that to black. Perfect. So then we can arrange these however we want. And then the last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to get the words love potion. So once again, I'll come way over here to the left hand side and type in love potion. And I think that um, Scary Halloween only has capital letters or uppercase letters, so it doesn't really matter if I capitalize anything or not. I'm just, I um, highlight all those, but I don't really think I need to. All I need to do is click on them, and then I can come over here on the very right-hand side again 
to the panel and this is the text style panel and click on scary Halloween font and there it is. Now one of the things I did because I was a little bit worried about this thing was I did change this for you guys in the SVG if you decide to use the SVG and I'll show you what I did different. Look at the O here. Well, let me make this, let's zoom in a little bit on this one. See the O there? And then the O here. See how there's that line that comes through the middle of the O? I played with the nodes and I got rid of that because I was a little bit afraid of that one. And the E right here, you see that piece that's in here in the bluer color E right here towards the bottom. I also got rid of that with nodes and the part of the P and the O. And if you've forgotten how to do that, I can show you on just one of these letters. We won't go through all that right now. But I double click. Whoops, let's see. I'm going to ungroup this first. Then I can double click on this letter, which gets the nodes, which are these little dots. And I can click on one. And when I click on one, it turns the dot into a little square. You see that little tiny square right there? Okay, originally I double click, I get the nodes. I can click on this, that turns that one, the one that I can edit right now, into a little square. And I can just hit delete on my keyboard and it will get rid of that one. And it will move to the next one in line because see how this one's a box around it now. And I can just go and keep going down through here. And it's going to keep... Okay, right now it's going the wrong way. It's going over here to the right and making more stuff go away. So what I think I'll do is I'll come over to this side of the O now select one of the nodes and start hitting delete and again this is probably really scary to you guys that aren't familiar with this at all but we work through it a lot and if you ever do get uh, uh, this um, software for your Cricut machine you'll see that you really enjoy using it and once you get the hang of some of this stuff it's really kind of fun I'm not going to tell you everything I'm doing right there but I'll just scroll out now and you can see that the O no longer has that extra piece through there that kind of had me worried when I had it all skinny like this and tiny for on the bottle. So let's scroll back out again. And I'm going to get rid of this word in blue because we don't really need that one. Or yeah, I did, didn't I? Because I'm making a new one. Oh well. Let's try that again. I'll come over here. Doesn't hurt to revisit. <laughs> come over here and type in love potion again. And click off and click back on. And then I can come over here on the very right and change the font. And I'm just going to leave it like that for right now just to play with it. So I'm going to make it smaller so it's going to fit on my bottle like that. Like that. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start manipulating it with the warp tool. See how this one, this one right here, is goes down and like this. So you can make yours warp however you like. So what you do is you just click on this and then you're going to come way over here in the same area where we find the rhinestone tool, how we can do our own rhinestones. And let's see, we're going to get the warp tool, which is this one right here, the warp panel. Every time you click on one of those, what's called a panel pops up. And now it says warp selected edges. I don't have any edges selected right now, so I could select, oh, oh, not on that, on this one. I could select the word Love Potion, and I could warp the selected edges and warp them how we've done before with nodes, or I think I can just go up here and choose one of these if I want to warp it like this. And you can warp this and make it look, you know, however you'd like it to look. Maybe you like it like that. Let me hit Control and Z on my keyboard to undo that and get it back to where it was. Maybe you want it to be like this. So again, you get these little things that you can just move around, nodes or little buttons. You can change this to look however you'd like it to look. Okay, or there's another way. Let me hit Control Z. Whoops, I went too far. Um, what else is over here? Well, there's a whole bunch of them that you can change it into, and it's really a lot of fun. Or what I did on mine was I just did it myself. So I clicked on this, and then I came up here to this button right here. It says just says warp. 
and it says warp selected edges. So notice it puts these little boxes and things all around here. And so I can just change this and make it look as creepy as I want it to look, you know? So I accidentally clicked off of it instead of on these little things. So I can just re rearrange it however I like. Maybe I'll like it just like that. But I really don't. <laughs> so let's see. I don't know. I can just keep messing with this until I get it to be something that I like. And I'm pretty much back to where I was. Maybe I'll make that part drip down a little bit more. This part go up a little bit more. And you can just make it look creepy, you know. That sort of looks like drippy blood to me. Ick. So that could be done. And all I would have to do then is go ahead and come up here and change it to black. And now I'm going to move this out of the way. And I'm going to take this love potion and I believe what I have to do now is say convert it nope I need to go object release compound path object no nope. all right I did this a little bit earlier now I'm forgetting uh, let's see what might I need to do I'm trying to decide okay um it wasn't convert to path it wasn't make compound path could weld it. I could group it. Convert to path. Okay, now I converted it to path. Okay, so now that's good to go and I can grab all this and say group. And then what I would do with this thing, and I actually like this first one that I did better, so I'm going to use it instead of this one and delete this one. Now if I was using a Cameo, I'm going to show you what I do. And then I'm going to show you how to bring it into Cricut Design Space and use it. So not to worry if you're just all Cricut. So here it is for Cameo. All we do is go to Send. And as a matter of fact, I'm ready to send this one. I've got it all pumped up right here, I think. And so I, what I did was I would just highlight on this to select it. And I'm using what's called the Auto Blade. And I'm going to have it cut like that. And I've already done a test. I always recommend that everybody do a test to make sure that your cuttings are, are properly set. So then all I'd have to, and to do that, by the way, you guys, all I have to do is hit the word test right here, and it would automatically do a test cut before it cut this whole thing. And I better move this because that's not where my vinyl was on my mat. My vinyl's way up here. Okay, so now I'm just gonna go ahead and send it. And while that's cutting, I don't know, you can probably hear the um, auto blade. On the new Silhouette Cameo 4, it's going to have a one-click auto blade instead of it having to do all of the things it just did there. So while that's being really noisy, I'm going to go ahead and go over to Cricut Design Space now so I can show you what to do. All right. I'm not sure if you can hear me over the machine, so maybe I should just wait a minute and I'll look and see if y'all had any questions. Oh, Kathy, I just saw you said you're sorry you're late, but you know what? Don't worry about it, because I had everybody going on wild goose chases trying to find this thing. Yes, Tina, you will be able to do most of the things with Designer Plus. There are a few things that you can't do, but one of the most important things you cannot do if you only have a Cricut machine, you cannot save your file as an SVG or a JPEG, I don't think. I know you can't save it as an SVG. So if you have a Cricut machine and that's all you're going to be using because you love your Cricut, and I have a Cricut and I love my Cricut, but to use this software, you have to have the business edition and it's just a one-time purchase of about $55. I think it's on sale again, actually, on Swing Design. Um, and it's only a one-time fee, and you'll have it forever and ever. It's on your computer. It's not something in the air or on the, you know, like Cricut was. It's something that you have on your computer. So anyway, all right, so here we are in Cricut Design Space now, and I've brought this in. So to bring it in, let me show you. 
whoops, not there. I went to my website first and sometimes it has just cameo stuff up here and it alternates and then sometimes, hmm, continue, I don't know what that meant. Something went weird just there. Oh well, sometimes it has just cameo pictures up here and then sometimes it has cricket and cameo pictures. But let's just go back to my home page. Here's the home page. Oh, in case anybody's interested, when you go to the home page, the first thing is going to pop up and it's going to drive you nuts if you've already signed up, but just exit out. Uh, getting started with Silhouette, five easy steps. As soon as you sign up, you'll get the first class and then once a week you'll get another pre-recorded class that walks you step by step by step through using Silhouette for your Cricut machine or any machine. But basically it's about how to use the software. And then you can use it, like I said, for your Cricut or your Cameo, or even your Scan and Cut, if you have the um, business edition for those last two that I mentioned. But anyway, every week, once a week, for five weeks, you'll get a class, and the last class is my favorite one that's on tracing, and how you can make your very own SVGs, and you won't need to purchase any anymore. So let's get rid of that. See, it's gonna click, click. All right, so to get the free file, this is my little blog, which this comes up whenever I put a new post up. Uh, you go to the library of free files up here, click on that, and once you click on that, you're going to come to this page always. Now, if you've joined the newsletter, you should have gotten in, doggone it, I sent out a newsletter today, and don't you know I forgot to put the password in it, but you know what? If you've already signed up for the newsletter, you already have a password. So all you have to do is sign up for the newsletter or sign up for the class, well, no, sign up for the newsletter and you'll get the, the um, password. So I'm going to put that password in here and hit enter on my keyboard. And that takes me to the library of free files. And this is where this free file will be, but I haven't put it up here yet. I was finishing getting ready for the video for this live, but it'll be right up here in the upper left hand corner. You'll just click on it to start downloading and it'll download if you're using Chrome in the left hand corner and you'll have to unzip it. But these are some of the other free ones that we have up here right now. This is one of my very favorites with the rhinestones. All right, so after you get that then, you will just go to upload and upload an image and you'll browse for this on your Cricut. And then you'll insert it, which I've already done. So I'm going back to my canvas. So you're going to get all three of these like this, and I believe they're going to come in about like this. Little tiny guys, right? And that's where it's going to be important that you're going to measure your wine bottles so you know how much space you have. So if you're just going to do one of these, what I would suggest then is just come up here to the upper right and ungroup. And then you'll have all three of them ungrouped. And say you want to make a bat juice one. So you're just going to figure out what was the size of your wine bottle? I have mine written down. Mine was 5.5 of the space I had to use. 5.5 by 3.5. So that means I don't want this to be any taller than 5.5. And right now I've got it at 7.649. So I'm just going to go ahead and change that to 5.5 with the lock locked. And see what happens. Okay, that looks pretty good. And that's going to fit perfectly on my wine bottle. So all I'd have to do then, and let's see, I think I'll change it to a different color just so it goes on its own little mat. There we go. So I'm going to go to make it and let's see if they all stay together like they should. Yep, they did. Okay, I wasn't positive if they would. And if they didn't, you may have had to say, uh, what's it called? Uh, attach. But they stayed together perfectly. So... All you need to do then in Cricut with these free SVGs is just um, say continue. And I don't have a maker. I just have the uh, Air 2. And all of the stuff that I make works with the Air 2. I don't make anything that just strictly works with the um, maker because I don't have one. So I have everything I like, I make, I like to make sure it's going to work with my Air 2. So somebody was asking about the box I had made yesterday. Can that be scored with an Explore Air 2? Why well, certainly it can. You just have the little scoring tool that looks like a pen. It's kind of shaped like this, except for it doesn't have this hooky thing on the end. It has like a little pen tip, almost. 
and you stick that in there and then it scores. And it's just making an indentation where you're supposed to fold. So that's all it is with Cricut. I mean, it's easy peasy if you have the SVG file. The, uh, you sure you want to cancel? Yes. The hardest thing with Cricut, I think, and the reason why I use the Silhouette software is because it's just so much more advanced, I think. I had a ball playing with my Cricut and my design space for the longest time. But then I started to see some people doing some fancier things. Like, for example, I wonder if I have it right here. Let's go to upload. There's... No, I don't think I have it here. But there was the... Um, uh, the print and cut that I made yesterday or a couple days ago. And I showed how in... Uh, <clears throat> in Wait, let me go back to Silhouette. You were able to just go ahead and cut things out exactly how you want them to be cut. Um, instead, instead of just being able to slice a box or a circle or something like that, you know, we can take this knife tool right here, come up here to where it is, and we can curve it however we want it to curve, and it'll cut like this something out. Or we could take this knife tool, and there's all these options here. I could cut one of these wine bottles in half with these little, well, both of these in half with this little square thing, and look what happens. Look what I get. And that'll cut just like that on your Cricut or in your Cameo, just like that. Isn't that cool? There's all kind of features here that we can use for our Cricut machines. And like I said, it's only $50. You know, uh, ask around, see what other people think of this software. I just love it. I think it's really worth the money. But, you know, that's just my feeling. <laughs> so does anybody have any questions about what I did today? You know, I could try to go back outside and show you how I spray that. <laughs> All I did was take the spray bottle and look, you can see, oh, I, I know what I got to do. I got to put this on. So you can see I didn't get it very well and I did that on purpose because I want some of the lighting to be able to show through all the more. So let me unload this, and I would weed this. If you want to watch me weed it, I can, or I've already gotten one weeded just in case I had a dilemma and things didn't work well. You, know, you always got to be prepared for unexpected issues. But this, what I'm using here is just a Cricut permanent, what was it called? Premium vinyl. I don't, I don't. I did not use this on my first one because I don't. I prefer the uh, the matte finish, and this is the glossy finish. But this is what I had available, so this is what I'm using. So I just go ahead and weed this. And I'm gonna tell you a little secret to something I do. I mean, it's not really a secret, but something that I always do. You see this piece right here that I it, most people ordinarily just take it and scrunch it up and get rid of it. I always just hook it on the side of my desk here until I'm done because I like to make sure in case I accidentally popped off something I shouldn't have, I might be able to salvage it back out of that little piece of paper, that little paper that I hooked on the side of my desk. So then I probably would use, and I know Chow is familiar with it, I probably would want to use the, um, what's it, the pin pen tool. See, where is mine? Here's mine. Nope, that's a real pen. Here's my pen pen. For those of you who've never heard of this thing, this is called a pen pen. And what it is, is it kind of has a little pin stuck in the tip of it so that it's easier for you to weed. And then Tammy was saying that she saw somewhere where people said that you could just take a um, mechanical pencil and somehow attach a regular sewing pin or needle in there. So like when I was in college, one of my professors always talked about doing things the cheap seat way, which he loved cheap seat ways for doing everything. So that would be a cheap seat way to do it and uh, it would work. So there's that. So then I have my transfer paper right here. And this is Oracal application tape. Just something that I picked up somewhere along the line move some of my stuff and okay so let me get this up here and come over here and get this 
and I do like to take it first like a, a little uh, U shape and go on there and start from the middle and work my way out although this is a little tiny thing this shouldn't be any problem at all uh, I use my burnishing tool or sometimes I use this bone folder because I find it comes in handy for a lot of things and I'll just do this and then I'm gonna put it on my bottle just find a place that I like it and usually what I do is I put a towel underneath of this to keep it from rolling around like it's doing right now but I think if I put my mouse right here it'll stop it yep okay so where'd I put that piece oh my gosh there it is okay so I gotta take this off and as you know a lot of people say let me move so it for a sec to take the paper like this let's see how that works so uh oh there comes somebody up with me I don't want him to come up all right perfecto so now I need to let this roll back over here where I want it to be and I guess right there looks pretty good so again I would just I probably should stand up to do this Okay, I should have put it a little bit lower. The only reason why this bottle, oh, I should have done it. Let me see if I can still take it off. Nope, <laughs> All right. Okay, so this bottle sloped more than my other one, so I should have taken that into account and cut some of this vinyl before I started putting it down here. Because I didn't pay attention. I'll show you the first one that I did and I didn't have to worry about this at all. I think it's gonna be okay though. You know, if it looks really wrinkly, oh well, it's ghostly. Okay, and you're gonna, you may see something happen, and if it does happen, that's good because I want it to. I'm hoping when I peel this off, it's gonna rip off some of this paint because I like it when it does that. Now, I don't know if it's gonna stick that well since I started taking it off. There we go. All right, so I have some marks and I'll show you my first piece. This is the first piece of transfer paper that I used. And you can see some of the white paint that's on there. And I wanted it like that on purpose. So what I did was I would do like this and then rip it off as if I was ripping off a Band-Aid and some of this paint would come off. And I may have let this paint dry a little bit too much. There goes a little bit. I just like that little bit of a more rustic look and it lets the uh, light show through all the better. And so if you have an issue and you can't get that to work, what I've also done is just use this tool. That's probably going to drive you guys ears nuts. See, I let this dry too long because in, it, usually I'm able to even scrape out some of this number nine. I'm getting some of it. And some of the number sign because I like it to look a little bit more rustic. You see that part right there? I like that. <laughs> Matter of fact, I can show you the one I made last year. If you look way back in my videos, this is the most gorgeous one I've ever made. Y'all, this is my favorite one. Isn't that beautiful? This was totally made in Cricut Design Space. This was from Cricut Access, and this is from Cricut Access. And so I did this and then I also went ahead and scraped off little pieces because it looks so pretty when the light shines, shines through and it's greenish because the bottle's green. So I would, I'm gonna work on this one some more but that's probably an, enough for you guys to see for right now. I just like more rustic. So I'll go get the first one that I did just so I can show you. know if you'll be able to see it better if I turn out this overhead light probably not because of that screen I'm gonna put something over it 
see if I can darken a little bit of the light. And so I would put a grouping of several of these together. Oh, and you can't see it because <laughs> it's turned towards me. I would put a grouping of several of these together. And here, in addition to making this one, I did do this one. Now, all I had was some orange lights and gold lights. Whoopsie. That's for the bottle of booze. So I made this one a lot lighter the color the paint that I painted on here and I think I might have liked it darker I don't know but I think they turn out super cute you saw that picture of the one I put online first it looks better when it's not laying down on its side on a green mat but anyway they're really cute easy to make I think they make really cute decorations and again uh, don't forget about it when it comes time for Christmas because that looked super, super cute. Go back in time. It was last December that I made this. It's a YouTube video, and I show how I did this in Cricut and how I went to Access and got these. But look at this. I want to show you something. This side right here, I used a nice, good size image. Look at the back. Look at how puny that looks. So it really matters whether you measure your bottle and take that into account before you make the size of your image because I think that looks really icky. It's so tiny, it, it just doesn't say anything. But this one, on the other hand, oh, beautiful. So I guess that's it. Anybody have any questions, let me know. Okay, I was just curious, were those just repurposed? Yes, they are. Oh yeah, no, no, no. Hey, Christy, just go to a restaurant that you like to go to that serves wine, and usually they have a big old bin that they recycle all their bottles in, wine bottles, booze bottles, and ask them if you can have a few for crafting. And they'll let you, the place where I went to try to give me, I was telling people a whole slew of them, I'm like, no, I don't need 10, I just want three, you know? So yeah, you don't have to drink. So anyway. Hey, Barbara. Oh, you can buy a case of wine bottles at a wine making store. I didn't know that, Tina. I, I like to drink wine, so I usually have. You know that Noel font? You know what that is, though? I think what that is, if I'm remembering correctly, that that is just words. That is just a word that is in Cricut Access. But if you go back and look at that video, you'll see I'm sure that this was a Cricut Access image, and this was one. And boy, oh boy, if you could see this lit up, ooh, 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 is beautiful. On a mantle with a series, with a couple of these, with different designs, it looks so pretty. Thank you, Stephanie. <laughs> All right, let's see. Yeah, I only got to make two of them. My husband's actually upstairs because I said I might need one more bottle. So he's trying to soak the um, labels off. And by the way, to do that, all I do is fill them with hot water. And then I put them in a tub with hot water. And the hot water that they're filled with makes them stay so they don't float around, you know, weird. Or you could just lay them down in the sink. If they're filled, they'll stay down. I just put hot water with soap. Let it sit there for half an hour and come back and scrape some off. And it works pretty well. Okay, the paint that's on the bottle that I used, is this just this junky paint that I happen to have from Ace Hardware? It's just a premium enamel, but I would imagine you can use any kind of paint that you want. This is just what I found when I went snooping around on the other side of the basement. Found this and I tried it and it worked. Yes, Tammy, thanks for reminding people to sign up here on YouTube. And then to sign up for the newsletter, because I am going to give away a Cameo 3, just as my thank you for all of you when I get to 20,000 people for subscribers. Okay. Aw, thanks, Kathy. <laughs> yes, please, everyone give me a thumbs up. And if you have any comments or questions afterwards, you know, you can always put them below this video. And I'm so sorry for those of you that I sent on the Wild Goose Chase. 
I am going to get this down one of these days and figure out how to how to get to my live like that. So again, thank you all. Oh, I thought you oh, <laughs> emptying a bottle. Ha ha ha. No, we'll probably empty a bottle later tonight. Sorry. <laughs> I do drink wine. All right. Well, I guess that's it. So thank you very much for joining me. Yeah, Barbara, right. So we all need. But you can get them, like I said, from your local uh, restaurant, too, for free. <laughs> so thanks for joining me. I'll see you all again soon. And I'm going to see if I can figure out how to stop this live. Because not only do I seem to have trouble starting them, I seem to have trouble ending them. So let's see if I can figure this out. So, Oh, you signed up for the newsletter over on my website? Uh, uh, let me show you. So right over here, if you come to my website, just go to where it says newsletter, I believe. And there it is. Join our newsletter. First name, email, and then just subscribe. Frosted. Oh, that would be really pretty to make them look frosty. Although these kind of look frosty too, I think, Chow. But I would try, I'll try that. Or you try it and let me see. Okay. Thanks, Chow. I enjoy seeing you all the time here in the classes. <laughs> Is your little guy sleeping? Yep, see you Saturday. If y'all have any thoughts on what you'd like me to teach about, let me know. <laughs> okay, come on over. Let's party. All right, I got to find how to get out of here now. Bye, you guys. Let's see. Oy, oy, oy. Honestly, I don't know. You'd think there'd be a big button that would say end. No, that just said go live. Oy, oy, oy.